Hey guys, what's going on? Hayden here. This is my third attempt to record this. My first attempt, uh, the audio for some reason didn't pick up. The second attempt, I started recording it um, again this morning. I recorded it originally yesterday, but my dogs were barking like crazy, so I had to go and calm them down. So hopefully third time's the charm. Spectre of Torment. Let's talk about it. I Honestly, I couldn't wait for the free update for um, other systems next month. I bought the Treasure Trove on the Switch, and I played Spectre of Torment. I just got through beating it. Man. Yacht Club Games, like, hats off to you guys for absolutely nailing it once again. Spectre of Torment is a ton of fun. Now, let's talk a little bit about the story, and I won't get into specifics, I won't spoil anything, but I want to talk about kind of, like, how I feel about the story. Um, it was really good. Honestly, it serves as a... So Spectre of Torment serves as a prequel to the events of Shovel Knight. Um, and the ending plays right into the beginning of uh, of Shovel Knight. I really love how they told it. Um, again, there's no big flashy cutscenes. There's no voice acting. But the story is told in a very impressive way. You see kind of flashbacks of Spectre Knight's past before he kind of got whole, um, all wrapped up in the Order of No Quarter. Um, you see kind of why he's uh, why he's serving the Enchantress, all that stuff. It is brilliant how this story is done. And honestly, like, the ending just was really... It made me step back for a second and say, like, damn, like, that really happened. Like, the, okay, like, the story in Spectre of Torment, I think it's the best that Yacht Club has... In terms of story... I think it's the best that Yacht Club has delivered so far. I loved the story in Shovel Knight, and I loved it in Plague of Shadows. But I think Spectre of Torment might be my favorite story. Um, really good. Uh, the gameplay. Now, the gameplay is much more focused. It's very different from Shovel Knight and Plague Knight, where in those two games, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of looking ahead and saying, okay, I got to shovel bounce here, and then I got to stop shovel bouncing so I don't fall in the lava, or... Like, you you got to plan out kind of your next move. Spectre of Torment, though, is just go, go, go. You're just going. And the game really has that emphasis of flow the whole way through. You'll be running, uh, you'll be doing wall jumps, you'll be doing uh, dash slashes, you'll be grinding on rails, and you'll be stringing those all together in combos sometimes. And it really comes together very nicely. Uh, there's a lot of really well-designed parts and levels that just have you, like, you have to be able to string together these different moves. And they're very easy to pick up. You know, the, the dash slash, it, like, it's not cheap. It'll always work the way you want it to work. You're not going to have any cheap deaths. Like, it, it, it is really good. It is really clean how Yacht Club has stringed together all these special moves that Spectre Knight can do. I love it. And the levels themselves, like, they're completely redesigned. They're not like Plague of Shadows where they're... Changed a little bit to fit Plague Knight more. No, these are completely new levels. And they're awesome. Like, first of all, you can choose them out of any order that you want. You can choose, after you've done the like the first level, like the planes, you can choose any of the Order of No Quarter stages in any order you want. Um, I personally, I did Propeller Knight first just to get that one over with, because that's the one I seem to have the most trouble with. Um, but yeah, I got that one done and over with. But yeah, it's so awesome. You can choose them in any order you want. And the difficulty, like, it, it, they're all, like, relatively the same difficulty. Um, and that's another thing, too. Like, I know my thoughts are all over the place. This is totally unscripted. I'm just doing it live. Spectre of Torment is, it's relatively to um, Shovel Knight and Plague of Shadows, it's a difficult game. It's not, like, soul-crushingly difficult, but Shovel Knight and Plague Knight, when you look at um, where those games took inspiration from, they're not that difficult of games. Spectre of Torment definitely brings it up a level. It is, it's a fairly challenging experience. Um, and there's also a, um, I guess to cement that uh, more challenging experience, there's, a, there's an optional tower. So I, I guess you could say it replaces the Hall of Champions. Like the, the Hall of Champions is not in this, uh, is, is not in Plague of Shadows. But what is there is an optional giant tower. Um, basically you have to, get to the top, and there's, like, a, a laser beam that's chasing you the whole way up, and it's a long-ass challenge, and it's difficult. I won't say what you get for beating it and whatnot, but it definitely, like, gave me probably around an hour of that game um, just trying to beat that tower, because it is really challenging. Um, ton of fun. 
Oh, what else is there to talk about? Um, oh, the I, I guess I haven't really talked about the humor in this game. It's totally on display. Yacht Club's sense of humor, you know, breaking the fourth wall, their kind of cheesy humor, like, it's totally on display. I love it. Even though this game is a bit darker in tone, if you compare it to Shovel Knight and Plague Knight stories, definitely the humor is still there. I love it. Now, I do have to talk about two minor complaints I have about the game. And let me stress, very minor complaints. These are by no means deal breakers. First of all, since the levels, you can choose them in any order you want, I wish that you could purchase items in any order you want. So the way you get items in this game is that you collect curios in uh, through the levels, or, or you collect the red skulls through the levels. There's a bunch to find in each level, and then you have to trade them in for curios, which are basically Shovel Knight's relics. They're your special items. Um, but it seems like you get them kind of at random. Like, it seems like there's no rhyme or reason to how you get them. And I wish that you could have them all available to you whenever. The fact that you're able to choose the levels in any order you want makes me wish that you could get the items in any order you want. Because, for example, say, like, okay, so Propeller Knight. That's the level that I seem to have the most trouble with. There's a lot of places you can fall off there, you know, with the wind coming at you and whatnot. And there's an item you can get in Spectre of Torment that allows you to float a little bit. It allows you to actually fly through the air. But I didn't get that item until, like, I was seven or... I think I had, like, seven of the levels done. And I wish I had that item way earlier, because I would have it would have saved me from a lot of deaths. So, I don't know. Very minor complaint. I still got through the game totally fine. Just wish that was there. My other complaint, and again, very, very minor, is that the world map is... You, you don't have it anymore. You don't have the world map in the game, but instead you just choose the levels from like a menu. You've got a menu with all the Order of No Quarter levels, and you just choose them. Well, it's not changing the game really in any way. I did kind of like having that map. It was a very nice aesthetic to the game. It just, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm a sucker for a good map screen, and Shovel Knight and Plague Knight had a really good map screen. But those are my only complaints. Again, it plays beautifully. I, I didn't even talk about the music or the visuals yet. Oh my god. Oh my god, the music. So every level, and the, there's some new there's some new songs in there too, but every level has a remixed theme of the original Order of No Quarter levels. Oh man, like, like, so, so good. This is some of the best chiptune music, like, ever made. Oh, it is so good. Um, I think I like it more than Shovel Knight's soundtrack. I think I like it more than the original soundtrack in Shovel Knight. Like, holy cow. Some of the remixes, especially, like, if you go and play it, especially Clock Tower. That remix, oh my god. Clock Tower's remix, just, oh, I love it. So, so good. Um... But also the visuals. These are some really well-crafted uh, 8-bit visuals. This is, I, I, you know what, I'm going to say it. It is the best-looking modern 8-bit game ever made. I'm not talking about, like, classic NES games and whatnot from the 80s and 90s. I'm talking about games that are made way after the 8-bit era. This is the best-looking one. The sprite animations are clean as hell. The background details are beautifully designed. Just everything, every little pixel, it just looks incredible. Spectre of Torment is a beautiful, beautiful game in basically every regard. You know, it looks and sounds amazing. It plays like a dream. It, like, it's so, oh my god, it's so much fun. If you are hesitant on buying the Treasure Trove or just Spectre of Torment on the Switch, do it now. Honestly, like, I couldn't wait any longer, and I, I frankly, I'm glad I bought it, because, like, now I can play this on my Switch whenever I want to. Oh, it's so good. But let me know what you guys think about Spectre of Torment. Have you played it yet? If not, are you excited for it? Did you enjoy this video? If so, make sure you hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've not already for more on Shovel Knight when the King Knight campaign finally comes out and other Nintendo goodness. All right, peace out, guys. Bye.